In 1921, one of the worst race riots in U.S. history occurred in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when members of an African-American community refused to allow one of their own to become the victim of an angry lynch mob. On May 31st and June 1st of that year, an entire African-American community was burned to the ground. More than 300 people were killed and an estimated 10,000 families were left homeless. Although the events that took place on those two days are often left out of history books, they are still a part of American history and it is important that we learn about them so that history doesn't repeat itself. That is why today we are talking with Dr. Olivia J. Hooker, a Greenberg resident who is a survivor of the race riot that happened in Tulsa's Greenwood District, also known as the Black Wall Street. Today we're going to find out what happened to Black Wall Street. One of the great things about being in Exposure is that we learn about finance, and we even learn how to buy our own stocks at a very young age. Although we learn about Wall Street in school, we don't get to learn about a place called Black Wall Street. Could you tell us, could you tell us about a place named Black Wall Street and what its neighborhood was like? Well, it was a very uh, prosperous neighborhood and the people were very loyal to each other. They would buy everything they could right in the neighborhood instead of going downtown and getting pushed around and cheated. And so it was a prosperous neighborhood because the people stuck together and traded with each other. And if they came to my father's store and he didn't have what they wanted. He would order it so they still didn't have to be embarrassed by being mistreated downtown. Olivia J. Hooker was born in Muskogee, Oklahoma during a time when the country was preparing to enter into the First World War. Her birthday, February 12, 1915, was the sixth year anniversary of the founding of the NAACP. And on February 8th, just four days before she was born, a film entitled The Birth of a Nation was released to the American public. The film was controversial because it portrayed the Ku Klux Klan, a white supremacist group, as heroes. Before the start of World War I, African Americans in the United States were fighting for equality. The end of slavery in 1865 brought the creation of a group known as the Ku Klux Klan who used violence against African Americans in an attempt to maintain white supremacy. However, the KKK became extinct by the 1870s. Although slavery had been abolished for nearly 50 years by the time World War I began in 1914, Jim Crow laws were still in effect, meaning that African Americans were not allowed to use the same bathrooms, water fountains, or restaurants as Caucasians. African Americans hoped that by helping the Caucasians fight the war, they would finally be accepted as equal. In 1906, an African-American entrepreneur by the name of O.W. Gurley moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma and purchased 40 acres of land, which was only to be sold to color. Greenwood Avenue, as he named it, became a place that was very popular among black migrants fleeing the oppression in Mississippi. Believing that black people had a better chance of economic progress if they pooled their resources, worked together, and supported each other's businesses, the Greenwood neighborhood would eventually become the wealthiest African-American neighborhood in the United States, earning itself the nickname the Black Wall Street. Olivia J. Hooker's father owned a store in the Black Wall Street. Although the Ku Klux Klan had disappeared in the 1870s, the hate group made a strong comeback in 1915 after the release of the film The Birth of a Nation. 
The NAACP campaigned to ban the movie, but was unsuccessful. There were race riots in St. Louis and Houston in 1917, and Chicago, Omaha, and Washington, D.C. in 1919. The city of Tulsa, Oklahoma became the victim of such violence in 1921. On the afternoon of May 30th, 1921, while entering an elevator, a 19-year-old African-American shoe shiner accidentally stumbled into a 17-year-old Caucasian elevator operator. Although it was only an accident, the elevator operator screamed. The other Caucasians who were in the building jumped to the conclusion that the shoe shiner had attacked the girl and used the alleged attack as an excuse to start an all-out war against the citizens of Black Wall Street. The next day, thousands of Caucasians, many of which were World War I veterans who had been recruited to the KKK, began ransacking the Greenwood neighborhood. They used guns to terrorize the African Americans and even dropped firebombs onto the houses of men, women, too, and children that lived in the neighborhood. In the end, more than 300 African Americans were killed and 10,000 were left home. 35 blocks of black-owned businesses and homes were burnt down to the ground with an estimated $26 million in damages that has never been paid back to the families. Little Olivia, who was only six years old at the time, never let that horrible experience stop her from doing great things. She went on to become the first African-American female to enlist in the U.S. Coast Guard and also attended Ohio State University, Columbia University, and the University of Rochester, where she earned her bachelor's, master's, and Ph.D. respectively. Today, at the age of 101, Dr. Olivia J. Hooker lives quietly in Greenberg, New York, on a street that has been renamed in her honor. In 2015, a dining hall on the Staten Island Coast Guard facility and a training center at the Coast Guard headquarters in Washington, D.C. were also named in her honor. The families of the victims of the Tulsa Massacre in 1921 were never compensated for the damages. I'll tell you, it's hard to get people informed because it was kept out of the newspapers. It was forbidden to print it. And so a lot of people who read the paper every day never knew a thing about the Tulsa disaster.